actually played the Guzen, and every year I would perform it for my talent show at school, right? Talent show? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was this one instance, so I had a few friends, friends, friends. Okay. <laughs> um, who were basically like, well, after I played, or every, after I played one year, they were like, mm. And the next year, they were like, oh, are you going to continue to play that ugly oriental instrument? That straight? Yeah, that straight. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, what? Like, yeah. And at that time, I guess, because I never really experienced like discrimination that much before, um, it really made me feel ashamed of who I was. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do mm -hmm. Miss Asia USA and go on yeah. to the next step was mm -hmm. because I wanted more people to, to know about Taiwan and to bring it more into the mainstream because mm. I think a lot of the times us Taiwanese we like to stay within the Taiwanese community yeah. or within like you know our little bubble. stay in a bubble yeah, yeah. yeah. and so like a, I think one of the most important things for me was to really bring Taiwan on an international level and that was yeah. one of my main goals. Hi I'm Tiffany Tang, Zhang Fang Yu and I'm the 2024 Miss Asia USA and I'm currently also a student at Stanford University um, majoring in engineering management and human-centered design. Well, both my parents are actually Taiwanese. My mom immigrated to the U.S. when she was just one years old, and my dad immigrated here when he was about 15, 16. Oh. Um, and so my mom was, my mom is already very, like, Americanized, right? I can tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, growing up, I grew up with my grandma. Yeah. She was also very, very Taiwanese. But yeah. I don't know why, for some reason, I just didn't resonate as much with my Taiwanese heritage yeah. until much, much later um, in my life, until probably during high school or after high school. Okay. Yeah. And even though I can't say that because I grew up in Los Angeles yeah. and Los Angeles is a very there. There's a lot of Taiwanese people there. I think for everyone's different. Right. Like for me, I I knew I was Taiwanese at heart. I always knew that because I grew in up the with, beginning. in the beginning, right? Because I grew up in a very Taiwanese family, right? My grandma, I spoke, grew up with my grandma speaking Taiwanese to me. Yeah. So I naturally, I always spoke Taiwanese with her at home. Yeah. My, my, even my dad, when I was small, he would always be like, every night, yeah. he'd be like, repeat after me. I love Taiwan. Uh, why so, Taiwan? Oh, I yeah. die one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, he was saying, repeat after me. Um, so at heart, I feel like I always knew I was Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what that meant. Your experience in uh, United States is, is like positive, or did you face any difficulties, or maybe a bit of struggle uh, as a Taiwanese American? Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest struggles, because when I was smaller, I actually, I was actually discriminated for my Asian heritage. I can't say specifically. Really, is that bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually played the Guzen, and every year I would perform it for my talent show at school, right? Talent show? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was this one instance, so I had a few friends, friends, friends. Okay. <laughs> um, who were basically like, well, after I played, or every, after I played one year, they were like, mm. And the next year, they were like, oh, are you going to continue to play that ugly oriental instrument? That straight? Yeah, that straight, yeah. Wow. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, what? Like, yeah. and at that time, I guess, because I never really experienced like discrimination that much before, um, it really made me feel ashamed of who I was. I but, how, but how did you face that? Or how did you um, share this experience with your family? Or I came home crying to my mom. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, hugging me. <laughs> yeah, like, help me. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. But yeah, because genuinely, I was really, I was really just like, it really pushed down my, mm. not like my confidence, right? Like everything in general. And so mm. that experience was a little bit traumatizing where I, like in the future after that, I became ashamed of my Asian heritage. And I think that made me, that made me want to become more American. So that was the experience I had when I was younger. Okay. Right. But then I was able to sort of turn that around starting from high school where I told myself I didn't I realized I was I was being Asian wasn't something that I was a proud of proud of at that time. And I didn't I wanted to change that mm -hmm. because I it became so for me, it became such a negative experience to the point where I almost lost my own voice. It became really difficult for me to talk in school as well, yeah. like in general. 
Um, and so starting from high school, I just started to put myself in different like leadership positions. I started the Taiwanese Affinity Club at school um, and slowly but surely started to um, work on myself, that part of myself. So I competed in Miss Taiwanese American in 2022. Um, it was a two month long training process. And one of the, some of the reasons I wanted to compete in the pageant was because, well, first of all, like I said, it was, I wanted to become more connected to my Taiwanese mm -hmm. heritage because at school you never really learn Taiwanese history, mm -hmm. culture, or any of that. So that was something I wanted to explore more for myself. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, it was that experience. Pageantry was a different whole, a whole different realm yeah. than what I, pre the previous experiences I had. Because in high school, I was very much academic driven, yeah. right? And so I thought pageantry was a different experience where I could, you know, be more connected to my Taiwanese heritage mm -hmm. while having a completely, yeah, contrasting experience. As a Stanford student, mm -hmm. very smart. <laughs> versus the pageant uh, yeah yeah because there's that like that there's that stereotype where people think beauty queens are not intelligent right or smart or i've heard a lot of the stereotype where people are like oh beauty pageants are not respectable from right? the hater comment or um, they just talk to you in person like i think from talk to me in person like from both standpoints mm. it's that ju it's just a stereotype yeah. there's a huge stereotype yeah. yeah um and so that's actually the exact stereotype where i'm trying to break right, right? Yeah. is that you know women can be both beautiful mm. and both and smart and capable you see taiwan right now mm -hmm. well i see taiwan as i mean i think one of the most special parts of Taiwan is how like diverse we are. And I think that was mainly shaped by, you know, our historical, mm. all our historical periods. You know, we we're constantly colonized like again and again by different, yeah. you know, cultures. Again and again. Again yeah. and yeah. again. Yeah. 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 Um, and one of our main things that I, I like to showcase is how progressive we are. You know, we're mm. a democratic country. You know, we have first female president already. Yeah. You know, our technology developments have been phenomenal. Mm. Um, and so that's really what I like to showcase uh, of Taiwan when I introduce it to people. Actually, an experience I had when I was Miss Taiwanese American, this was one of the last events that I attended during my reign was um, one of the, it was the largest 4th of July Huntington Beach Parade. Yeah. And yeah. when I was on the float, and it was a very, um, it was a very American audience, yeah. actually. And when I was on the float, there were so many people there yeah. on the sides being like, oh, stay safe, Taiwan. Like, mm. we support you, blah, blah, blah. And so it was very clear to me that people knew of Taiwan. Mm. A lot of people at least had heard of Taiwan yeah. before I knew of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes in my videos, uh, even I say, like, Taiwan is a country, I can get some haters coming, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> what about uh, in United States? So if you... For example, if you uh, meet uh, a Chinese person occasionally, or maybe some people from the overseas, mm -hmm. do you think this topic is very sensitive to, to talk to or to share as a Taiwanese American? I think, I think it's still a very controversial. It's still very, it's still yeah. a very yeah. controversial topic. Mm, yeah. To the yeah, and it, you have to be very careful with how you yeah, yeah go about yeah. saying what you say to like, especially in a public sense. Yeah, yeah. But you know, this is one of my reason I want to make more video because I want more people to know about Taiwan. Yeah, and they can you know they can think about it. Right, yeah. right. And I think it's very important. And actually, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do mm -hmm. Miss Asia USA and go on yeah. to the next step was mm -hmm. because I wanted more people to, to know about Taiwan and to bring it more into the mainstream because mm. I think a lot of the times us Taiwanese we like to stay within the Taiwanese community yeah. or within like you know our little bubble. stay in a bubble yeah, yeah. yeah. and so like a, I think one of the most important things for me was to really bring Taiwan on an international level and that was yeah. one of my main goals I mean I still get a lot of questions people are like oh so what is Taiwanese culture, mm. right? And I think that's a very interesting well, it's, question. It's, but it's very hard to say. It's very hard. Very hard, right? yeah. If you even think about like Taiwanese, what is Taiwanese clothing or mm. national costume? Because for Miss Asia, mm. we had to design a national costume 
for yeah, our country. Very hard. Yeah. And that was a very hard process because we don't have a necessarily a set national costume or clothing that we that represents us. I would right? say because we we are mixed culture, I would say. Yeah, in, we're in a, a blend. We're a blend yeah, of blend, different yeah. cultures, yeah. right? Yeah. Do they tell you are like overseas Taiwanese or do they think you are Taiwanese when you come back to Taiwan, you know, you walk on the street? When do you I think they can tell the yeah, without speaking any language? Um, I've been told that they can tell that I'm from the States. I don't know how. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, you can't I, tell. I, I, do I, I look more like American? <laughs> I mean, I think I, I, I think I look Taiwanese. Yeah, I think. <laughs> because you have Taiwanese parents. Yeah, because I have oh, Taiwanese parents. Of course you parents. look Taiwanese. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any favorite Taiwanese food? Favorite Taiwanese food? Yeah. I have a lot. Recently, one of my favorites, which is a, a little controversial too, is stinky tofu. Oh, really? I've been you asked, like it? I love stinky yeah. tofu, especially when I come back here. Mm. The night market stinky tofus are really good. Very I stinky. Like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I like the fried ones. You the like fried. a fried? Oh, yeah. I don't like the soup one. No, I don't like uh, the I soup don't like ones. It. It's very stinky. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. the fried ones fried with ones. the sauce too. And mm. yeah. <laughs> when you come back to the United States, do you miss anything about Taiwan? I think. Well, I really like how everyone here, it just feels very communal. Everyone feels very close to each other. I mean, even here, you see a lot of people walking on the yeah. streets. In LA, people you need drive. To drive. You yeah. drive everywhere, right? So here, I feel like everyone's walking. You see people more like one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Um, that's what, yeah, I miss that aspect. Um, and oh, a lot of things here, they're open much later than all the shops in mm. LA or the States, they close by like 7, 8. I yeah. like how everything's open so late here. Oh, no, 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 but it's still not great. I, I understand everything. How's your Taiwanese level? Like on a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, my Taiwanese level, I feel like at least a 9. 9? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You can. Oh, no. <laughs> Mom disagree your Mom disagrees. level. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you think it is? Because Mom's Chinese is good, right? Mom's Chinese and Thai are good. As well, do you want to send some message in Taiwanese for the audience? Yeah. Well, I should make some change in way. I should make cut to a long time at Taiwan. Well, I Taiwan at Taiwan. Got you. Okay. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye bye.